everything, my photographic work, the vision comes first, and then also concept and vision together. So I think about what I'm going to do, and then imagine the way I photograph the things. I have many different series, but they are all interrelated conceptually. Theaters, I started as an early stage of a New York settlement in, back in 1974 or five. So I decided to practice my photography, you know, bringing my camera into the movie theater. I open my shutter when the movie begins you know, when the title shows up, and then I just leave my camera open for two, three hours, whatever the movie length is. When the ending credit shows up, then I just close my shutter. So I photograph entire movie images, and then I process the film, and then there's no movie images shows. It just ends up with white, right, left on the screen. And then interiors of the theater shows reflecting this white light coming out from this screen. So that, uh, you know, the people were in the theater, but they all disappeared receiving this radiant white light from the screen. Which means, well, probably I want to say, you know, too much information end up with nothingness. You know, this is kind of interesting concept. How do you show the nothingness, emptiness? You have to have something surrounded by this nothingness. In this case, the movie theater is the, the case to hold this emptiness. This is deep in my mind that I encounter always seascape visions. Almost 500 seascapes has been done. The comparison is a very key factor. And I travel around the world, you know, for looking for the seascapes. I travel around all the European coast, British coast, French coast, uh, German coast, and Japanese sea coast. But the conceptually, is basically just air and water. That's probably the same vision that many thousand years ago people stood on the edge of the cliff looking at the seascapes. So this is just a sample to give you a kind of a time trip, you know, time machine trip to go back to a very ancient memories of our culture. This is uh, one of the earliest sample of my seascapes, Caribbean Sea, uh, Jamaica, and back in 1980. I was on the edge of the cliff, not so high, probably 20 meters up high from the sea level. And that was quite a comfortable spot to overlooking the ocean. No boat, no yacht, no ocean liner, and it's just water and sky. That's what I wanted. I decided to stay as exactly the same composition and then horizon line on the dead center, half sky, half water, no other composition. So I have, I made a mark on my camera screen, the back of the ground grass, clearly marked where the horizon line should be. Some days, you know, it's raining or foggy, you don't see the horizon line. Then, in that case, I wait till the horizon line get visible and then make the horizon line registered onto my camera. And 
as far as you are spending a time with my seascapes, you are free from the time, you forget yourself. It's kind of meditation, and once you start getting into the detail of the water, you just drown into the water. So uh, it's just one way to be freed from the time is to get drowned into the time. In my walk, there's no human appears because I am trying to deal with the free human state of landscape. Suppose I were the first human appeared on the surface of this planet Earth. As a first human, I look around and then this is the first landscape as a seascapes, pure air and water. So that's why I have no human traces. During the early 90s, I uh, visited uh, Madame Tasso in London, and then I did a series of wax portrait figures. I'm not interested in uh, living people, I'm only interested in uh, waxed people, because they don't move, so it's very good for my photographic subject. <laughs> Nobody can sit still to me. This is like a 20 minutes exposure for the each shot, for the portrait picture. These are from the most recent series of wax portrait series. Princess Diana and uh, Fidel Castro and then Arafato. I brought my own studio setting and then I gave my uh, proper lighting, very soft lighting, to match the 15th, 16th century Flemish painting, like, or more like a Rembrandt lighting. And then I photographed them. And then this is how it works. It's very brilliant and very lively looking. You never know this is uh, wax figures. Maybe this is uh, idealized visions of Castro as a photography. So, and then again, people tend to believe whatever the photographic image is. So, uh, I'm using this uh, natures of uh, photographic images as a part of my uh, technical gimmicks and uh, tools of my art. Meaning of the time for my series is very important. That's the key concept of my work. Only the men share the sense of time, I think. So using my photography in you know, a time-related mechanism to investigate entire history of human consciousness. This is a one issue, very important issues of my art. You have to be aware of your time, which means you have to be aware of your death. So concept of death is very heavily related to a concept of the time. So it's something created from the same source and same roots to me. In my series of architecture, every photography is intentionally out of focus. And I'm trying to going backwards as a time concept again. I'm trying to capture the image of architect image of the building before they build the building. So it's more like an ideal stage of visions which architect came up with. So trying to make it out of focus, it doesn't serve as an uh, information source of the architecture, but it gives some kind of uh, idealized stage of the visions of the building. The Buddha series, this is uh, 1,000 sculpture made during the 12th century and 13th century in a Buddhist temple in Japan. They are very identical, 
but if you take a close look, they are all very different. So I decided to photograph all thousand of them uh, with kind of panoramic views. Uh, section by section, I end up with photographing 48 different sections, almost identical composition, so that you can see all thousand of sculptures within the 48 photographic images. So this is under only the natural light condition, which was what the people in 12th century used to, to look towards statues. This is the most ideal visions to see the sculpture. I feel like I own them, or I feel like I'm owned by them, the sculpture of one certain Buddhas. And then I decided to make a video version of this. So I use one of my uh, exhibition in Japan, uh, Hara Museum, video camera approaching to my exhibition space and getting into the building. And then the camera focused on the one particular image starts spanning from one image to the next. And then it gets so speedy in the middle that uh, the image of the Buddha start moving towards you, start approaching towards you. And then at the end, it gets so speed, the image gets so blurry, it's almost out of focus. You don't see anything. It's just melting down images. That's how you end up. And then after five minutes, you count it as an encounter one million numbers of Buddha.